Hey guys, it's Aaron, and today we're going to model a shower head. So several weeks back, we did another video on modeling a kitchen faucet, and that video focused a lot on follow me shape. So where we take a, a profile of something we want to do and we follow it around a circle and it creates a solid cylindrical shape, cylinder based shape. Um, a lot of that could be used to make something like a faucet or a shower head as well, but we're going to use some different tools to get similar shapes, but not the same workflow. So if you've didn't, done that one before, um, this should be a bunch of good stuff. It'll be, it'll be new. So let's try it out. Let's, let's hop in. All right. So, uh, in here, I got a picture of a shower head. This is kind of the thing we want to do. It wouldn't match this exactly, but just wanted to have an idea of what to do. So we're going to have like a wall plate here. Then it's going to come have this cylinder pipe that turns and we'll have some incrementing, you know, enlarged, bigger and bigger circles here. It will cut in and make it get smaller. Then we have this, the actual head part will get smaller to larger. And then we'll have an inset for, you know, where the water comes out. Nozzle? I don't know. Whatever that is. All right. So uh, I just figured just to draw it properly, we'll put it up on the wall here rather than drawing it on the ground. So I'm going to start right here at the circle. I am going to, whoops, I tapped X for X-ray. I'm going to start at the 24 side circle. Not a big deal to, you know, if you want to change this, make this different, that's fine. Just make sure you know how big it is. Um, I want to make note of the fact that it's 24 because I'm going to use that number of sides to my benefit later on. I'm going to pull a circle out. I'm going to go straight along the red axis. That way I know what direction this circle is, is growing from. Um, that makes the quadrants straight up, down, left, and right. All right, and now that's a circle. So I'm going to start by just doing a push pull. I'm going to pull it out like that. There we go. And that gives us kind of, you know, this plate right here. Uh, to get the smaller piece, I'm going to pull the pipe out from there. I'm going to offset. I'm going to pull that in. Again, if I had exact measurements for any of this stuff, I could use it. I don't in this case. I'm just kind of modeling the shapes for practice. Um, so I'm not going to worry about exact dimensions or anything like that. I can come in fine tune as I do this if I want. So for example, this seems a little thick right here. I kind of want to push this back because I put this circle in here. What I should be able to do is grab this and I should be able to move it. Uh, let's see, what is that? The green axis. So if I move it along the green axis, I can pull it back a little bit and that gives me a thinner lip right here, but it also gives me a little bit of a arc there. See that little bit, little bit of a transition. It's not just straight flat. Kind of, you can kind of catch that on this picture here. All right. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm actually going to, I don't want to just pull this out like this because if I just pull it out, uh, I can't make it turn. I can't make this bend in the pipe. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to start here with an edge. I'm going to take that edge straight out like this. And then what I want to do is I want to kind of figure out where do I want that to, be, whoops, got a little clicky there. So I want something kind of like that. That's, you know, about that same angle, but uh, I do want it at an angle. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to use an angle and to go from about here to here. I'm going to wait till it gets purple. That's tangent to both ends. There we go. So now I can grab these three edges, right click, weld them. Not a required step, but it's going to make our end product look nicer. And then I can say, now follow me. That's under tools and click follow me and click my circle. And there we go. Now I got that bent pipe coming down. All right. Now we're going to go, we're going to keep going. So what I have here is I got, it gets a little bit bigger and then it gets bigger again. So I'm just going to make that two increment I come in here, offset this circle out like this, uh, not that much, I'll pull that out like that. Oops. This happens sometimes because some point in the follow me, my circle got broken. Not a big deal though. Cause I can come in here. I can double click. And then I'm going to hit uh, my modifier key to deselect and deselect these other edges, then right click and say weld. Now I can pull this out and I'll get that nice single, single piece coming out like that. Um, I'm going to pull this out like this and then erase it. Just get rid of those edges all the way around because um, I don't need that to be separate pieces right now. Easy enough. Get rid of that. All right. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to offset again. Pull that out. Not quite as, oh, I don't know, probably about the same size set. I'll pull that out like that. And then I'll do the same thing. I'll pull this up here like this and then get rid of it. 
because that was welded, you see how it deleted as one piece. So one of the things I can do at this point is I'm, I pop back and forth between the reference picture. It looks like this, this collar, I don't know, this piece is a little bit wider than this piece. I have them uh, pretty close or longer. Um, I can make changes now. So I can say grab all of this and grab this and we'll maybe scoot that along like that to make it a little bit longer. This is another thing I like so much about SketchUp is you it's very forgiving and, and geometry can be moved around quite a bit. All right, so from there, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go smaller. I'm gonna come in like this because I think I have like a joint here where it's gonna kind of give me some, uh, the ability to move this shower head around. But I don't, I'm not, not gonna model the joint. I'm just gonna model a piece here where it kind of represents that offset. Uh, and then we're gonna come out with just slightly larger like that. And then of course I will pull this out like this to actually make my head. Pull this back up here and delete it. All right, that looks good. To get the actual shower head wider, I'm gonna select this and scale it. Now this is an is issue, right? Because if I come in here and I start scaling this, even if I hit my modifier key to scale about the middle, I'm scaling in different directions, might not be perfect. Uh, yeah, see, it looks like it angles forward more now, so I'm gonna hit that back like that. And to what I can do here to figure out how do I, how do I wanna actually scale this, um, I can reset my axes. So if I come up to tools and I click on the axis button and come in here and I'm gonna click on this top point right here and drag my red axis up to the top and I'm gonna click twice. That aligns my axis here. So now if I hit scale with this face selected, I can hit modifier key to go mod or scale around the center and drag that out like that. And that all happens one move real quick, real easy. It's aligned and then when I'm done, I can always right click on the axes, whoops, I missed the axes. I got the thing behind it and hit reset. I'll put the axes back where it was. All right, let's kind of emulate this little thing we got going right here. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna offset, come in like that much. And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna go offset again and just take it in like that. That's it. Because what I wanna do is I'm gonna push pull that and I'm just gonna push it in just a bit. So not a ton, but there I get that little bit of a lip. Uh, in fact, I might even grab this one now and just push this in just ever so slightly like that. Yeah, it looks good. Um, so last thing I want to do on here is I want to throw some little, just some little holes in here, little divots in here to represent the shower head. Now, remember how I talked about how this shower or the circle I originally made was 24 sides. That's going to be important because what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to draw an edge from here to the opposite side. There we go, like that. So if I, this edge, if I if I drew some circles here on this edge, I could s copy that around uh, 11 times and I would have basically the same look I have here. So it's three holes and then it's copied around 12 times. So um, I'm not gonna actually keep this line here because I don't wanna intersect my circles. So instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna erase that I'm gonna create a circle. I'm gonna create a circle with fewer edges. I don't need 24 edges, it's gonna be awful tiny. Come up here. Let's go, let's go right here. Um, what's the best way to do this? You know, I'm gonna put that edge back in that I just deleted. And I'm gonna do my 12-sided circle. I'm gonna do it right here. And just, I don't need it to be very big. I want it to be actually pretty small. All right, there we go. I'm gonna grab that and I'm going to option copy that up to about here and I'm gonna say divide by two. And that's gonna give me, there we go, those are, that is what I want. I want those three circles like that. I'm gonna take that then and actually get rid of this too. I'm gonna to grab those three circles, hit rotate. And I'm gonna go from this point right here, option, not one, but two increments of the circle over, type 11X. And there we go. We got all of our circles then. And with that, we would actually take that right there, make that into a group, and there is our shower head. So it is basic, it's it's simple. It's not doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but I mean it's also a simple design. We could have gone in and put more more detail in there, but this is the fundamental pieces of that shower head. And uh, so we did we did use a little bit of follow me, but mostly it was push pull and scaling circles to get all that geometry created. 
So hopefully you like that. And if you're not a shower head type person and you made it this far, well, congratulations. But even if you don't model shower heads regularly, this is a good example of how to use the basic tools that the fundamental foundational tools of SketchUp to model just about anything. That's what we kind of shoot for when we, when we create these modeling videos is not here's how to specifically use SketchUp to make shower heads, but here's how to use the tools inside of SketchUp to make anything, pick, pick a thing. Um, hopefully you like that. If you did like it, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, leave us a comment down below. Is there something else you can think of that you would love to see modeled? Or is there a workflow or a process inside of SketchUp that you would like to see more about? If so, let us know down in the comments. We like making these video videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you.